adaptarnos a nuestra forma de hacer manta para adaptarnos a los nuevos tiempos, reinventarnos de... de... back from our local commercial break thank you ladies and gentlemen for joining me again today talking about grace theology talking about what god has done talking about the gospel talking about imputed righteousness talking about justification by faith alone talking about our death to the law talking about our freedom and talking about the love of god so thank you for joining me today i'm going to take my next caller we got bill from charlotte carolina hey bill how you doing today yes thank you for taking my call um uh, i was listening to a sermon just this morning and it seems to stand in direct contradiction to what you're saying here today on the radio program. A magic formula or some words you repeated after someone else, you were saved because you repented of your sins. What this fellow was saying is that you're not saved by simply saying a magic formula sometime at some point in your life. You're saved because well, because you've repented of your sins. So one can conclude that a hallmark of a true Christian is one who has repented of their sins. <sighs> Bill, I'm going to go ahead and put you on hold for a minute here. So just be patient. I'm going to put you on hold. I want to speak to Bill, but I also want to speak to the viewer audience here. Now, did you hear what Bill just said, how you were saved? He said that you're saved by repenting of your sins. Now, when we look at the scripture, we see that sin is transgression of the law. That when a person commits sin, they are breaking God's law. Now, what this person is saying is in order to be saved, you got to keep the law. Because if I have to repent of my sins, which is in relation to the law, it means that I have to do my best attempts and efforts in order to keep the law to be saved. Now, that's what Bill said. Now, I don't know where Bill got this from. I don't know where he's heard it. The words you repeated after someone else, you were saved because you repented of your sins. So wherever he heard it, it's irrelevant. Wherever he heard this garbage, it's completely irrelevant. We just go to the scripture and we find out what the Bible actually says about how a person is saved. We go to the book of Acts and we see the apostles answer this very question. They said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Not maybe, not might be, not could be. They didn't say you had to repent of your sins. In other words, they didn't say you had to keep the law. In fact, when we get into scripture, we find out that a person is justified by faith independent from law performance. We maintain a man is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. That is they got a non-guilty verdict independent from working or obedience or compliance or effort or good works or behavior towards the law. See, the scripture shows us very plainly and clearly that a man has a justified verdict, a not guilty verdict, independent from repenting of their sins, independent from any law performance. We maintain a man is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. And that's what the Bible says, the just shall live by faith. We live by faith in the justified verdict that Jesus Christ gave us on the base of his life, his death, and his resurrection. So the scripture then shows us once we have been justified by faith, independent from law performance, then we have peace toward God through the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 5, therefore having been justified by faith, we have peace toward God through the Lord Jesus Christ. We have peace through the knowledge of the justified verdict we have by faith in Jesus Christ. And Jesus said about that peace. My peace I give to you, my peace I leave with you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. If your heart and your mind is on law, compliance, and behavior, it will be troubled, it will be afraid, because it will end in catastrophic failure. The scripture says, whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law that the whole world would become guilty before God and every mouth would be stopped. Law conceptualization just shows you that you're guilty. You won't be walking by faith. You won't be trusting in Jesus. If you're looking to your works, you won't be saved. You won't be justified. You won't be made righteous. You're looking to yourself, your law performance. I don't know, sir, who told you this stuff, but I can tell you that a man is saved by faith in Jesus Christ. You don't have to work in accordance to the law. To the one who doesn't work but believes on him, Jesus, who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accredited to righteousness. 
So you can see that a person doesn't have to work in accordance to the law. A person doesn't have to repent of their sins in order to be justified and made righteous. Now, I know the human ear does not like to hear that. They do not like to hear the grace of God because they think they have an island of righteousness within themselves. And when the fleshly mind hears complete freedom from the law, they don't know what they do. And the Bible doesn't tell us that the grace is the power of sin. It tells us quite the opposite. The sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law. I don't know who told you this, sir, that you have to repent of your sins in order to be saved. They just placed you under the law. And the sting of death is sin and the power of sin. Say it with me, audience. The power of sin is the law. So, Bill, I'm going to go ahead and put you back online. I want to get your two cents on this. Yes, can, can you hear me? Yes, Bill, I can hear you fine. Go ahead. It appears to me that you people just want to turn the grace of God into licentiousness. Bill, I'm going to hit this little black button next to me. When I hit this little black button, it's going to be like having a potato shoved in your mouth. You're not going to be able to speak. But I still want you to listen to what I got to say. What you got to understand, Bill, is when it talks about turning the grace of God and licentiousness in the book of Jude, he starts out by saying, contend earnestly for the faith that was once and for all delivered to the saints. Now, the faith has to do with justification by faith alone. We maintain a man is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. Contending earnestly for the faith is standing firm on the fact that the ungodly person does not have to work. They just have to believe in Jesus who justifies the ungodly and his faith is accredited to righteousness. Standing firm on the faith, Bill, is standing firm on the reality that we have a righteousness not of our own through the law, but that which comes through faith in Jesus Christ, as the book of Philippians tells us. May I be found in him not having a righteousness of my own which comes through the law, but that which comes through faith in Jesus Christ, even the righteousness which comes from God on the basis of faith. That's standing firm and contending earnestly for the faith like Jude tells us to do, Bill. Bill, consider Romans chapter 3, verse 22, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith in Christ Jesus, upon all and unto all who believe, and there is no difference. That by our faith we are collectively and equally made righteous, and not just any righteousness, Bill. Notice what it says. Say it with me, folks. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith. So when we contend earnestly for the faith, Bill, we're standing firm on that reality, and we're not compromising and going back to the law. Because Paul said, I do not nullify the grace of God, for if righteousness came through the law, then Christ died needlessly. So standing firm on the faith, Bill, is understanding our righteousness is not through the law. It would nullify the grace of God if we took on that conceptualization, thinking we were saved because we repented of our sin. Believing we have a righteousness and a right standing of our own because we've kept the law to some measure, Bill, that's what you've been self-deceived into believing. So then Jude goes on to say that certain men have crept in who were destined to destruction, who would turn the grace of God into licentiousness. And then he goes on to say, Woe to them, for they have gone the way of Cain, Bill. Now I realize I need to tone it back a little bit for my audience. I apologize. I see that I'm getting a little bit worked up. I did have about three cups of coffee this morning, got up early, got a big day ahead of me. Of course, to Bill here, that's probably one cup too much. I haven't repented of my sins, therefore I'm not saved. I'm hopped up on caffeine, and according to him, can't, can't be saved, haven't kept the law. But look, here's the deal, folks. When you look at the book of Jude, and it talks about those who are turning the grace of God into licentiousness, it's not those who have faith alone in Christ. It's those who have gone the way of Cain, who prop up their works. It says, woe to them, for they have gone the way of Cain. The way of Cain is denying the sufficiency and the application of the blood and propping up your works in its place. It's not walking by faith. If you listen to all these false works righteousness preachers and how they say, if you believe in the grace of God, it leads to sin, it leads to ungodliness. All the while telling the world and people on the streets that the grace of God, if you believe in faith alone, it's a sinful message. Woe to them, the Bible says. Woe to them, they have gone the way of Cain. Now, Bill, I want you to think real hard a second. When you listen to my radio program and how I talk about being justified by faith, I never bring in works, not one bit, in order to be saved or how to live before God and be justified. 
made righteous. I simply tell people that the work of God is to believe in the one that he sent. As Jesus told his disciples, by the way, Bill, you remember that? And that little conversation he had with the disciples when they came up and they said, what must we do to do the works required? And Jesus said, this is the work of God that you believe in the one that he sent. One singular thing, Bill, the way that we live by faith, the just shall live by faith. We live by faith in the Son of God. That's the work of God, to believe in the one that he sent, Bill. Now, Bill, as you take in all that information, now ask yourself, does it sound like I have gone the way of Cain? Now, Bill, I'm going to go ahead and hit this little black button, and when I do, it's going to be like a cork has popped out of a bottle, and your mouth now will be able to be heard, and you'll be able to speak. And when I do, I don't want you to go on a 10-minute monologue or a community college lecture. I just want you to answer to me and to my viewing audience, does it sound like I have gone the way of Cain? Um, yes. Bill, can you hear me now? Can I actually speak now? Yes, Bill, I told you I took the potato out of your mouth. You can speak now. Go ahead. What do you got to say? I want you to answer the question. Have I gone the way of Cain? Sir, you should be ready to hear these words when you die. Depart from me, you who practice it. Click. The red button has been employed, and Bill has been ejected from the radio broadcast. Did you notice how Bill had the inability to answer a simple question? A yes or no question. Have I gone the way of Cain? He then props up another text that he has a faulty interpretation to to backload works. When Jesus says, depart from me, I never knew you, you who practice iniquity. Iniquity has to do with the law, something we're not under as believers. Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. These people were looking to their works. But Lord, haven't we done many wonderful works in your name? See, we see Jesus telling these people who are appealing to the works of the law that they're workers of iniquity because that's all the law reveals. Whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law that the whole world would become guilty before God and every mouth would be stopped. So anyone under the law is a worker of iniquity. Whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law that the whole world would become workers of iniquity and every mouth would be stopped. That's what it means to be guilty, that you're a worker of iniquity. See, these people are trying to justify themselves by the works of the law, Bill. But haven't we done many wonderful works in your name? But by the works of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight, Bill. For only through the law comes the knowledge of sin. Only through the law comes the knowledge you're a worker of iniquity, Bill. That's why the Bible tells us as believers to die to the law through the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, you have died to the law through the body of the Lord Jesus Christ that you might be joined to another. That is, him has been raised from the dead. See, Bill, whoever this person is telling you that you need to repent of your sins to be saved, that's not dying to the law, Bill. That's a living conceptualization to it that a person now has to do their best they can to overcome it and to keep it. Come on, Bill, wake up. You repeated after someone else you were saved because you repented of your sins. See, Bill, any heretic that's telling you to repent of your sins in order to be saved is trying to get you to look to your wonderful works. But Lord, haven't we done many wonderful works in your name? Haven't we repented of our sin and turned from our evil way? You should save us on the basis of our meritorious good works. See, that's what this clown is telling you, Bill. But the Bible says, by grace, you have been saved through faith, not of yourself, but as a gift of God, not of works. Listen, anyone should boast, Bill. Listen, anyone should boast. See what it's not about. It's not about our works. It's not about what we do, Bill. It's not of ourselves. It was about repenting of our sins. It would be about our works. It would be about what we do, wouldn't it, Bill? But it's by grace we've been saved through faith. Say it with me, audience. And this not from yourself, it is a gift of God. And everyone in unison, say it with me, not a works, least any man should boast. So Bill, I'm sorry that you've been corrupted from the simplicity of the gospel, but I'm not going to let you do it here on my radio show. You got it? You're not going to get to go on some 10-minute community college lecture providing verse after verse that you give faulty interpretations to, Bill.
the simplicity of the gospel believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved Jesus said in John chapter 6 verse 47 truly truly I say to you whoever believes in me has everlasting life the one who believes has it the moment they believe they shall not come into the judgment according to Jesus in another verse truly truly I say to you whoever hears my words and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life not might have not could have not possibly have but has everlasting life shall not come into the judgment bill but has passed from death unto life can you feel me on that bill the one who believes will not come on the judgment that pass from death to life that's why the Bible says these things are right to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you can know that you have eternal life not think or hope or wish it's a possibility we'll find out when we get there when God weighs the scales and balances and finds out we've been good enough and kept the law but these things I write to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know. Spell it with me, audience. K-N-O-W. Know as in for certainty. You can know you have eternal life based on the promises of God. A once and for all, all sufficient, all time perfect sacrifice. And salvation is completely independent from ourselves or anything that we do. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to thank all the callers tonight. I'd like to thank Bill for calling in. And getting corrected by the word of God, all scriptures, God breathed, profitable for correction, rebuke, and training in righteousness. Bill has been rebuked and corrected tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for calling in. See you tomorrow. God bless.